Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining us for Elcom's Digital Workplace in Practice webinar. You've heard all the buzz around digital workplaces and might be wondering how can you actually implement a digital workplace for your organisation or team. This is the second webinar in our two-part series on digital workplaces. During this webinar, we'll discuss the practical steps to implementing and managing an effective digital workplace. During the webinar, we'll learn how to implement a digital workplace, some of the features and functionality, as well as how to actually increase the engagement of your digital workplace. My name is Josh Anstey. I am the Customer Solutions Director at Elcom and your presenter for today's webinar. We love joining in the conversation on social media, so please uh, send us a tweet or you can connect with us on Facebook or LinkedIn, as you can see there on the screen. So let's jump straight into it. Here is the agenda for today's Digital Workplace and Practice webinar. First, we will look at how to implement a digital workplace. Then we'll look at the features and functionality to enable a digital workplace. And we'll wrap that up with looking at how we can actually increase engagement with our digital workplace. I just want to touch on the key benefits we covered around digital workplaces. And the first is increased collaboration, improving innovation throughout the organization and encouraging innovation throughout the organization improving communication, commu connecting people with information, and also as a result of that, connected employees throughout the organization. So what is a digital workplace? A digital workplace is really an environment that enables your workplace and your workforce to achieve business objectives via a set of tools and technologies that cater for a range of needs for different situations governed by various policies. There are so many elements that make up a digital workplace, as you can see in this diagram, this includes team workspaces and policies and procedures, document management, BYOD, customer service, infrastructure, social tools, sales and marketing, the list goes on. This chart is by no means a complete list of everything, but it covers quite a lot of the different areas of a digital workplace there. We don't have time to look at the practical implementation of every element today. So in this webinar, I just want to focus on a few of these key elements, which can be delivered through one single platform, which at the center, we believe, is your web CMS. Having a look at that diagram, the areas that have gone green are the areas that we believe your web CMS can really nicely tick the boxes for and cover off those different areas and elements. And so I'd really recommend considering you know, putting a web CMS in place. It's a, a very powerful solution. Uh, to really be the center of your digital workplace ecosystem. We're not going to cover every one of those elements over there. We'll touch on uh, just a few of them, but it gives you a bit of an idea as to what the web CMS will do for the organization. So before we do jump into having a look at how that actually comes together, I was keen on running a very quick poll. and I'm going to put the poll up on everyone's screen right now. And the poll is, uh, the question is, at what stage of the digital workplace journey are you? Uh, Option A is researching, option B is trying to implement a digital workplace, option C is revamping our intranet, option D is trying to increase engagement on our intranet. Some very interesting results. Alrighty, I'll close that off now and we'll share the results and just let everyone have a look at some of these results. Very interesting to see. So how do you implement a digital workplace? And this webinar really is all about digital workplaces in practice. What are the practical steps that you and your team can take now to get the wheels in motion and make your digital workplace actually happen. So let's have a look. <clears throat> there are four key, key considerations. Uh, strategy, teams and user stories, design and change management. The first we'll look at is strategy. And that really is the start of your digital workplace. Understand what your departments, users and managers need and want in a digital workplace. And, and this might involve looking at the day-to-day -day tasks or, or overall objectives of a certain role or department working together to determine how the digital workplace will achieve these tasks and objectives. Mapping out these requirements will really help you create that digital workplace strategy and also that roadmap. And this is an important step so that you get the appropriate support and buy-in from staff, departments, managers, and executive leadership. Having a strategy in place also helps provide everyone with insight into the vision of the digital workplace, which should help user adoption as well as user engagement. And it really is important to communicate that vision and plan. And you should really have a strategy of how you will implement and deploy your digital workplace. And you need a post-launch strategy, not just a, a strategy leading up to the digital workplace. So think about the first 3, 6, 12, 18, 24 months and onwards. Keeping in mind that technology, organization, trends, needs, they all change. 
So the long-term strategy needs to be agile so that you can actually make the appropriate changes where necessary. To help build your strategy, it's important to understand the team and user journeys. And the team and user journeys are an overview of how certain teams, departments, and users will actually use and engage with the digital workplace. And this should cover a few elements. So for example, what information do they want to find? What documents, forms, and policies do they need access to? What is the process or flow they will go through when navigating around the site? Are there certain pieces of information that they need first or they would like to access with only one click? The team and user journeys are a great starting point before you get to the design of the digital workplace. And this can be a real fun exercise for you and the team. And, and there are three key ways that you can actually do this. One-on-one -on -one discussion. So sit down and interview someone in a certain team or department and, and get their honest, unique feedback. Focus groups. Get small little groups and teams together and, and run a bit of a focus group to understand how they're actually going to use the internet. And the other option is workshops. And I think workshops are really, really powerful. Get everyone together in a room with a big whiteboard or multiple whiteboards. You start doing card sorting or storyboarding and really get everyone involved in buying into the actual strategy of what you're going to be implementing for the digital workplace. The design of the digital workplace is not just the design of the site, but think about the design as the overall user experience. And this actually includes access to the site. And there are a lot of things to consider. Here are just a few questions to consider around the design of the digital workplace. How and where will users access the digital workplace? Desktops, mobile, tablets, home, work, client sites, on the road. How does the design need to cater for this? So is the site mobile responsive? If someone's going to be accessing it on the road all the time on a mobile device, is it mobile responsive, the site? Will most of the users be accessing the site via a mobile, a tablet device, or a desktop? And based on that information, what information do they need to access easily if they are on the road? So if most of your users are going to be accessing your internet via a mobile device, think about the design of the mobile device, what information they're going to need, and what information you should therefore preference to fit into a mobile responsive site. Will they be using their fingers to select options or a mouse? And this is really important, especially when you're looking at the size of buttons, text, links on the site. And what will their bandwidth be like? So if users are in low bandwidth areas, you may want to consider a leaner homepage that loads quicker. You can leave the big images for a different section of the site that loads quickly for those used to make sure that it is loading quickly for those users in low bandwidth areas. If everyone's on a desktop with fantastic connectivity, then great, you might look at a, you know, bigger images and videos, but I think it really is important to think about the users, what their bandwidth is going to be like when they're using the internet. Change management is a really key area, and it is you know, all very well, uh, you know, fantastic to build, build a great uh, intranet at the center of a digital workplace, but without thinking about change management, you're hoping that you will build it and they will come. And for a lot of users, this might be the first time they've worked in a digital environment and used an intranet. The strategy, the user journey, the design, and, the, and technology should all ensure that the digital workplace supports their roles and day-to-day -day activities. At the same time, you should work with the team to transition them towards their new digital workplace, including the internet. What are some of the ways you can do that? Help document how the different teams and departments will actually use the internet. It's also a good idea to provide information and training. And we would recommend that you have champions in each of the teams or departments and regularly check in with them to see how they're going, how their team or department's going. Their feedback's really important to help you continuously improve the internet. Remember, your internet is constantly evolving, so once you launch it, then the work actually starts. So having a strong change management plan in place will help user adoption, collaboration, and put you on the right path to success. So what can you do to help enable the digital workplace? Let's have a look at some of the features and functionality that you can use. We're going to have a very quick look at these seven key features and functionality. Social collaboration, document management, search, forms, workflow, mobile, help directory. So social collaboration, why would you add social collaboration to your internet? Really social collaboration and team workspaces are very powerful and engaging tools to actually add. And they're very simple and easy for you to do it if you're wondering how. A social stream can be added to a page that users can provide their feedback and thoughts on that specific area or topic. For example, you could set up a marketing area and the marketing team can share information, they can communicate, they can collaborate, they can share documents around certain topics or projects or campaigns. 
And there are many benefits to adding a social collaboration space to your intranet, including providing team members with a voice and a way to contribute to a project or the organization. It also helps build the culture and make people who are based remotely feel part of the organization. Document management is another key area. Adding a document list library to the intranet makes it easy for users to upload, share, and collaborate on documents. How can you do this? Very easily. A document list module can be added to any page of an intranet and it can bring in documents from different areas depending on the preferences and security permissions. For example, the HR section of the intranet could have a document list showing a range of HR documents, policies, and procedures. If you have a long list of documents, you can add filters or searches to improve the user experience and help the user get the information they need as quickly as possible. There are many benefits. Uh, really one of the key benefits is that it provides a central document repository that's easy to access. It also removes that reliance on that file share, which is difficult to access if you're out and about and on the road. Search is another really important element. Uh, why, you might be asking? Search really helps deliver the information your workforce needs in a quick and concise way. We are all so used to going straight to the search bar to look for something. Your search can be implemented to index content as well as documents on the internet. A powerful search should also include best bets as well as federated search. For those that don't know what federated search is, federated search is a functionality that lets you point the search at another content repository, such as a file share or another site, and bring that information into your site in the search results. And we all know the benefits of search, and one of the real big benefits there is that users can very quickly and easily find the information that they're actually looking for. We all love forms, don't we? And forms are really key elements of that intranet and, uh, as part of that digital workplace. One of the key reasons is, is that there are so many things you're doing in the business that are paper-based or manual, and you could easily improve those if you actually had an online form. It, it should be really easy for you to add an online form if you're wondering how can you do it. Start from the, the basics and think about the business processes you have at the moment. How many of them are manual or paper-based? Do you have a, to print out a form, fill it out with a pen, then scan and email it to someone else, or do you have to walk over to someone else's desk and place that piece of paper on their desk? All these manual processes can be automated through online forms. There are so many online forms an organization can have, and every organization is different. Just a few examples, online forms might include uh, things like expense claim forms, leave requests, professional development, uh, medical forms, new employee onboarding forms, travel request forms, uh, quote request forms, the list can go on and on in every business. There's a whole range of other forms that they'd want to put in place. There are a lot of benefits that we could discuss with forms. I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, but, but really overall online forms can help improve business processes and reduce paper. They'll also help provide better transparency around your business processes, and they'll help save you and your team time by being able to quickly fill in a form online instead of having to print it off and then fill it out. Especially if you're on the road and you've got a distributed workforce, it's even better having online forms where you can actually centralize that whole process. Workflow helps manage the process of content and forms and documents. And it really provides structure around how you're actually managing those different pieces of content there. Setting up a workflow should be a quick and easy task to help streamline the business process on your intranet. It should just be point and click. Content, documents, or forms should be able to go through a workflow approval process. And it'll make it really easy for you or your managers or the appropriate people to approve and action items either from your intranet or your email as part of that workflow process. An example of a workflow approval could be an expense claim form or a leave approval form. Of course, publishing content to your intranet or, or public website for that matter can also go through a workflow approval process, as well as documents you're uploading into the site. There are many benefits. One of the key benefits is it'll actually help reduce the paper trail and it will provide transparency around where something is in the process. It'll also help staff plan their time as they can see what is in their pipeline for them to review and approve. How many times do you get that question from someone asking, have you had a chance to look at the form they submitted and they put on your desk or they emailed through to you? This way they can jump in, see where it is in the process. It helps reduce those additional calls and emails. We've discussed mobile access a little bit, and it really is a key point to the digital workplace is making sure it is uh, mobile friendly and, and mobile accessible. This really means that your internet needs to be mobile responsive so that your team can access the internet on the go, and it's really going to help them improve their engagement, their activity, and their productivity. Corporate directories are fantastic, one of my favorites, and as I like to say, uh, if you want to know who's who in the zoo, that's what your corporate directory is for, trying to find different people in the organization. How can you implement them? 
quite easily. The corporate directory can integrate to your Active Directory and it can bring in all user information and details. You can also set up the corporate directory and let users update their details directly into the corporate directory, especially if your Active Directory is not in a great state or not completely set up or up to date. You can let users update their information directly into the intranet as part of the corporate directory. And you can really make it easy for users to set it up so they can then search and filter based on different criteria. For example, uh, the department someone might be in or their location. It's also helpful to have a general search for the corporate directory. So that if you met Sally the other day and you can't remember Sally's last name or, or their department, you can just type their name in and it'll show you all the results and you can go find the person you met the other day. Many, many benefits of a corporate directory. Uh, and really a corporate directory means that users can come to the internet to find out information about their colleagues. It'll make your internet functional and useful. It'll also help improve the efficiency around the business as users can quickly find the details of people they want to contact. It'll also help showcase different users' expertise and knowledge. So that helps to reduce that all company email, who knows about this or who can help me with that. That's what the corporate directory can do. So I have another poll I'd love to uh, put on the screen there and get everybody's feedback on. So there's a poll on the screen there. The question is, what is the number one key feature you would like to add to your internet to make it more functional? The five options, social collaboration, corporate directory, search, mobile access, forms with workflow. All right, we'll give everyone about 10 seconds or so to jump in and select their answers. All right, we're going to close off the poll there. Thank you very much, everyone, for adding those interesting options there. So we've looked at how to create a digital workplace and the features and functionality that can support it. And you might be wondering how you can actually now increase the engagement with the digital workplace. So let's have a look at that now. There are a few things to consider with that. Bring users on the journey and keep everyone involved and engaged. This starts right at the beginning. The team and user stories are a great way to find out what users want with their digital workplace so that you can ensure you deliver it through your intranet. Having a strategy in place will keep everyone in the loop with your plans for the digital workplace. And constantly getting users' feedback to ensure that the digital workplace is still achieving its objectives is really, really important. If you find that the digital workplace is no longer meeting the needs of the users, then you can make the appropriate adjustments. Make your intranet the go-to for all information, documents, policies, and procedures. If you create a culture that drives people to the intranet, it will help increase the engagement and in time, it will become second nature and normal for users to go to the internet for everything they need. This will help cement the internet as the glue that brings together users across the organization in different teams, departments, offices, and geographies. Whether someone is working in an office, from home, or on the road, the internet will help build a culture of innovation, collaboration, and sharing. We've mentioned this a few times, and it really is important to increase in that engagement. Make sure your digital workplace is mobile friendly. It is just such a key criteria to increasing the engagement of your digital workplace there. That way users can access it when they want to, how they want to. And if one of your requirements for the team and user stories uh, and your strategy is for personalization, then this will have a uh, factor heavily into the design. It's a, a very exciting idea of personalization and a concept to talk about. We're not going to go into that in detail now because it's a whole different discussion, but it is something that's really important. For those of you that are wondering what personalization is, it is the ability to deliver specific content for users based on criteria. For example, a user in the IT department might want to see IT specific information, whereas a user in the marketing department might want to see marketing specific information. Or another scenario is that the information you see is personalized based on which office or state you are based in. So think about which parts of the internet are for standard and general all users content and which parts are for personalized content. When you're designing the home page, think practically about how you are going to personalize that content. Where will it come from and who will be managing it? And there are a few ways to go about personalizing content for users. It can either be enforced uh, from an admin security permission area, uh, or you can let users opt in to see specific information and content that you would like them to have that ability to do. Uh, there are benefits to both approaches, and you might want to ensure that users see certain information that the whole organization has to see, and then they can opt into certain information for the different teams. So it's a whole uh, concept in its own. There's a lot, lot to think about and discuss with it, uh, but it is very, very powerful in terms of increasing the actual engagement on the intranet. Uh, and really that, that personalized dashboard is going to help take that person to that next level. Setting KPIs is another great way to measure the success of your intranet to ensure that you encourage that engagement and improve and increase that engagement. 
there's really no right or wrong to set and every organization is different. So you might want to set KPIs based on certain metrics of traffic, for example, the number of logins or page views per day, week or month. Another is based on the numbers of documents uploaded or forms completed or social collaboration groups engaged with. It might be a KPI on how much paper is saved as you've moved everything online or how much time is saved since you've automated all the other processes that were previously manual. Setting KPIs as part of your strategy is really important when you start the project and it will really help you measure that excess and drive that engagement. You can then review your KPIs and iterate. It's really a great way to show users that you're listening to their feedback, monitoring the digital workplace and adjusting to help improve the engagement of the digital workplace. So what are the next steps to creating your digital workplace? At Elcom, we would love to help you create your intranet or digital workplace and support you in improving your current intranet and digital workplace. We have a great ebook available on the Elcom website that is free to download, the six-step guide for a social intranet business case. It's a really useful resource and it'll help you and your team understand and build the business case to create your digital workplace and intranet. You can download that on our website, www.elcomcms.com, E-L-C-O-M-C-M-S.com. I hope you found the information provided today interesting, useful, and beneficial. Before we do get into the questions and answers, I did want to give a quick overview of Elcom and Elcom CMS. Uh, Elcom is a, a globally recognized web content management platform with over a million end users worldwide and a global team. We collaborate with mid enterprise organizations to assist them achieve their corporate objectives by delivering powerfully simple web solutions and customer experiences. Elcom CMS powers digital workplaces, intranets, websites, portals, mobile, social, and e-learning sites. With over 100 base features out of the box, Elcom CMS makes it easy for you to quickly and cost-effectively deploy solutions to support collaboration across your organization. The contact details are on the screen there. Feel free to contact us with uh, any other questions you have. We do have a, a few questions that have come through. We've got time for, for one or two questions, and any other questions that have come through will contact you directly and answer those questions for you. Uh, so we'll jump straight into them. The first question here, what roles and departments should be present during a user journey workshop? That's a really great question. Now, it's really best to have a representative from each of your departments and people from different levels of the organization present at those user journey workshops. It'll really ensure you get a better cross-section of the organization. So you don't want to run the workshop and just have only the marketing team or, or only the IT team or only the management team. You really want to have a complete cross-section of the organization, someone from each of the teams and departments and a representative from each of them, and then also different levels in, in I guess, the hierarchy as well. Uh, some more junior members and, and some more senior executives and everyone in between. That way you really get an understanding of how everyone in the organization will use the uh, digital workplace. You can also make sure that people come to those workshops a little bit planned and prepared and maybe you give them a bit of a worksheet to discuss with their team members prior to actually attending the workshop. Uh, look through the other questions here. Another question, uh, our organization won't be able to use so many features in one go. How do you suggest we approach this? That's definitely a common question and something that is quite easy to address. Uh, from a personal perspective, I guess, at Elcom, we have built Elcom CMS to be a module platform so that you can add on additional modules in the future as required. So if the organization doesn't have the appetite, the bandwidth, or the ability to use a certain feature, let's just say, for example, social collaboration, Rather, you can add, rather than miss out on it altogether, you can actually add it on in a future phase, for example, phase two or phase three of the project. And your web CMS should really give you the ability to turn on and off functionality depending on your requirements and your business roadmap. We're just about on time, so I'll just answer one final question and then we'll wrap up for today. And those questions we haven't got to, we'll, we'll be in touch with everyone individually. Uh, final question is, what is the best way to personalize the intranet? Very exciting topic and, and there's a lot we can talk about. So I uh, won't go into too much detail, uh, but it really depends on how your organization uh, works and, and how you function as a team. There is not really a right or a wrong for how to personalize the internet. So think about it from a user's perspective. What information do they want to see? And then once you understand what information they want to see, you can work out how should we filter that information. Is it based on teams or departments or locations? The list can go on. Uh, so it really is a, a good idea to have an understanding of what do users want to see and, and use that as a baseline to personalize the intranet. You're not going to get it right first go, or maybe you do, and fantastic. It is definitely something you need to constantly work on and tweak and evolve and personalize it, get the feedback, adjust it, and then take it from there. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone, for those questions. 
any other questions, feel free to contact us. The contact details are on the screen there, and we'd be more than happy to help everyone with their digital workplace and their internet strategies. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining today. Have a fantastic day.